Hi there, this is exercise 7 we're going to look today at um, ways to approximate um, sine theta, cos theta and tan theta. Um, and we want to do this, I suppose, because sometimes it's it's a bit messy playing around with complicated expressions. We did the same thing with binomial expansions quite recently, where we didn't particularly like the way they were written. Um, in this funny bracket thing, and we approximated them. And this, I suppose, is a similar thing, um, which is true as long as the angles are small. Um, bear in mind, by the way, um, that we always measure our angle. Let's call our angle x, um, or oh, theta. I've got, I just noticed I've got a theta over here. Um, and so really, I suppose this should say cos theta. So I've got this um, theta going across on the x-axis. And you'll notice... <coughs> my angles are 1, eventually I suppose it gets to 2, and minus 1, and eventually it gets to minus 2. Um, the cos graph is the red line, and I'm trying to approximate the red graph with the blue graph. And you'll notice the blue graph is quite close to it, up to a certain point, in fact up to about I don't know, about there, you could say. It's pretty pretty close. But after a while, it loses its accuracy. And I suppose, again, we're talking about what, what we've done in the past, where we're saying it's accurate within, say, there to here. And um, beyond that, it's not very accurate. Um, notice the expression that we've got for this, for the cos theta. We're saying here that cos theta is approximately equal to 1 minus a half theta squared, which is not a formula you'd come up with on your, on your own perhaps, but just looking at it, it kind of is a quadratic curve, this blue line, and that roughly matches what the cos graph does. Well, bear in mind what the cos graph really does is, is it does this. So actually, if you t extend this further, it looks nothing like a cos graph. But all I'm saying is here, around this kind of area, you can say to yourself, well, you know what? Yeah, I can see that looks roughly like a cos graph within certain limits of accuracy. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to find that that approximation. So let's have a look at this and um, see what we come up with. So there are three approximations we need. We've seen the first one already. It says cos theta is roughly equal to 1 minus half theta squared. And the other two is mu are much easier. This one is sine theta is roughly equal to theta. Now, this is the sine graph, of course. The sine graph does this, and then does this, and then does this, and it carries on doing that forever. But what I care about is this kind of in-between here and here kind of thing. And you can look at it, you go, you know what, it looks pretty straight. And that's what that's doing. It's saying between, say, certainly there and there, it's pretty straight. So for small values of theta, and this is what we're saying, it only works when you only have, a, you know, only go so far either side of the y-axis. But from small values of theta, sine theta is roughly theta. And if you drew the tan graph, the tan graph does something like this. So again, you could quite happily say, you know what, it looks quite straight. And that's why we get tan theta is roughly equal to theta as well. So these three you're meant to know <coughs> and be able to use. So let's a proof of this. Now for the proof of these we use some work we've done previously on um, uh, sectors and that we only, we only saw some of this stuff in the last lesson. So if I just show you this. Now first of all we can say um, I think we'd all agree the area of this um, a sector, all of it, is a half r squared theta. And the the logic of this is having agreed that that is half r squared theta, we've also got the area of the triangle. So the triangle, you should remember, is a half r squared sine theta. Now, when theta is small, this is basically the, the logic of this. And it's not much of a, a, a logic. All you're doing is you're saying, 
when you get a very very small angle there a very small angle this sector and this triangle you can see it gets really quite similar and if i had a very small angle there there you go it's really really close so when theta is small we say a half r squared theta is approximately equal to a half r squared sine theta the sector is roughly equal to the triangle and of course all that goes all that goes and theta therefore is approximately equal to sine theta or vice versa you can write it that way around and that's that's the proof we, we, it's just this argument of what happens when theta is small now we've got a similar thing for the cosine one and for the cosine one we don't look at the areas for this one we actually look at the length of the arc so if you look at the length of the arc you may recall that this line is l equals r theta so that's for the arc now if you look at this line you should recall that we can say well, i think we did it last time didn't we we said that that squared i'm going to say it's not that it's not i think we called it x y last time so i'm going to make it up i'm going to pretend that's x y i'm going to say x y squared is r squared plus r squared to r squared um minus sorry um two r squared cos theta and we actually wrote that last time as 2r squared 1 minus cos theta and the argument again it's the same trick you basically say when theta is small it says small on this well what happened to again we got a very very small angle you basically say x y is almost the same as the arc so that curvy bit and that straight line is almost the same distance and the smaller you make this the closer that line is as theta tends to zero x y tends to the uh, well we call it l here didn't we so i might as well just say l so um well what was x y now be slightly careful this says x y squared and it's probably easy if we leave it like that so rather than saying that i'm going to pretend x y squared tends to l squared and that allows me to say that 2r squared 1 minus cos theta that's the x y squared equals and i can't i've got to do l squared so l squared is r squared theta squared okay so what can cancel you can see straight away the r squareds cancel if i move the two on the other side i get one minus cos theta equals a half theta squared and they swap places i get cos theta is roughly equal anyway to one minus a half r squared uh, half theta squared so um that works quite well um let's use it and um, use a small angle approximation to estimate the value of cos of 0 0.4 so cos of 0 0.4 well all i do is i can use this formula here i know that cos theta is roughly equal to that so my theta if you like in this example equals 0 0.4 so cos of 0 0.4 is 1 minus a half not theta squared but now it's 0 0.4 squared and if i chuck that into my calculator according to me that's 0 0.92 type it into your calculator see if you agree now then of course it wants me to find the percentage error so i've got to actually type in cos of 0 0.4 now make sure you're in radians if you're not in radians it's going to fail miserably so shift set up angle input radians yep i'm now in the radians I'm not sure if i was before and i'm just going to type in cos of 0 0.4 and that says oh it's very close actually it's 0 0.9210 now, i can do, write a few decimal places here now obviously my error then is the amount that they're out and you can see if i do one minus the other i get 0 0.00106 so my percentage error is that number 
divided by the actual number, 0 0.92106. And that, I suppose, technically is times by 100%. So if I just do that, 0 0.00106 divided by the answer and times by 100 to put it into a percentage. So it's a very small error, 0.115% according to me. Um, yeah, that's what I've got on already as well. So, um, yeah, there it is. So that's relatively straightforward. Yeah, percentage error, just yes, using the formula. Example, um, assume that x is sufficiently small that terms in x cubed and higher can be ignored. Okay, so let's just do this. Cos of 3 of x, first of all. That is, we've got using this formula again. This is the formula that comes up most often because it's the um, most complicated one. But it becomes 1 minus a half of not theta, but now 3x squared. So that sounds like 1 minus, well, that's 9x squared. Half of that is 9 over 2x squared. Notice I now have to do something which also says cos of 3x. So that's 1 minus 9 over 2x squared. And I have to times by 1 plus sine of 5x. Now sine of 5x is using this formula. So this just becomes 5x because sine theta is theta. So sine 5x is 5x. And I get this to be 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 5x. So that's plus 5x. Minus 9 over 2x squared. And 9 over 2 times 5, what's that? It's obviously 45 over 2, so um, which is 22.5. So I don't know how we want to write it. It's probably best write it as 45 over 2 x cubed. And that's what I think the answer is. Let's see what they get. Um, ah, and it says uh, x cubed terms are can be ignored. So in actual fact, I don't even need this at all. And it's just this bit. There you go. So now I get the right answers. Um, finding the approximate polynomial expression for sine 4 theta. Well, sine 4 theta over 1 plus cos theta, again, ignores the theta cubed terms. Sine 4 theta, using this expression, can I just be written as 4 theta. That's easy enough. 1 plus cos theta is 1 plus 1 minus a half theta squared. Um, just tying that up a little bit, that's 4 theta over 2 minus a half theta squared. And I should tell you that at the moment we can't write this as a polynomial. And that's because we've got this funny expression on the bottom. But remember binomial expansions. So I think this is a binomial expansion. And I think I can divide everything by 2, top and bottom, and that gives me 2 theta over 1 minus a quarter theta squared. And the bottom bit is 1 minus a quarter theta squared, really to the minus 1. That's really like 2 theta times by 1 minus a quarter theta squared to the minus 1. So I'm just going to do this. It's the 1 plus nx formula that you should remember. So it's 1 plus n, which is minus 1, times by my x, which is a minus a quarter theta squared. Plus, now, um, do I need to even do the next term? Because it says ignore cubic term, so I'm going to stop there. So this is 1 plus a quarter theta squared. So notice what it says here. My answer is 2 theta times by 1 plus a quarter theta squared which is 2 theta, and in actual fact, the next one will be cubed. So I think the answer is 2 theta. Let's see what the answer actually says. 2 theta, there you go. Um, note, note this is a bit weird. Isn't it? Basically, anything with a theta cubed, theta to the 4, theta to the 5, we're allowed to ignore. Um, this next term would have given me minus 1 minus 2 over 2 factorial times by minus a quarter theta squared squared. So that would have been theta to the 4. And then I would have times by theta. It would have just given you even silly power. So these are what we've done. The only one we haven't yet used is tan theta. I can assume you will do when you do the exercise. You're going to do exercise 7f. Um, 
it's, according to Miss, it's fairly straightforward. She's looked at the exercise, so hopefully you'll find it okay. Best of luck.